themselves being camera shy. I can't even believe it. Hi, good morning fish people, I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV and it's, oh is it what day, I always forget what day, it's Tuesday the 3rd of August and uh, you'll be joining me at uh, Psych House Fisheries at Psych House and we are on the Match Lake. I've just shouted time, I've just got to put, uh, I think I've a couple of little things, so I've got my bait ready and everything. Um, I've drawn peg 12, let's go have a quick look. I've got Ringer at the side of me on my left again and then Jeff's a bit further down from him can't really see everybody I'll, I'll just show me peg Sozza's two down to me right he's been moaning already and then we've got the fat bloke with a limp right next to me that's Scoey um, Mick Smith he won it here last time on peg one he's drawn peg 30 this time can't believe it cracking peg and peg 19 where I was in that uh, corner there in the square in the cut it's absolutely black with fish but i'm just going to show you this there's fish mulling about everywhere here whether they're taking a the bait or not don't know 90 pounds won the match um was it yesterday or the day before so don't know we shall see how the how the shallow in shallow fishing goes today and i have got two shallow i've got a mugging rig and a shallow rig a pellet waggler I've got a bomb which I can a bomb rod I can convert straight to a method feeder if I want and a deck rig and a margin rig so have a look at my peg so all round here I don't know if you can see there's fish mulling about everywhere uh, ring has just gone out on the waggler out there but you can see backs out fish out there my plan is that there's a fish just cruising about here so my plan is it's top two and three down here. It's just on a nice ledge. I've got a lovely flat margin down here for later. It's actually the same here, but I'd have to pull all these reeds back. It's exactly the same, just like down here. So I might pull them reeds back. Um, I'll be out there on the bomb, pellet waggler, mugging and shallow. So and I think the mugging, I could be, I could be mugging here. I could be mugging, I'll be all over. So I've got 14 meter pole set up for that. Now I've just got a feeling, I'm just looking now, now there's a few rods and casts being done, there's not as many fish cruising, there's still plenty of cruisers but not as many as there was before, I had a word with you guys. Amazing, as soon as you shout time, I'm just looking now, they are disappearing, it's, I mean there were loads in front of me now, there's still one or two, but they are disappearing, that's because people are casting in now and it takes a while for them to get back into the swing of it for us. So, my bait tray is not all organised just yet, but we'll have a look what we've got on. Here we go. I've still got to stick. I've still got to stick these away. My spare hooks. Put these away. Six mil pellets for short. I might even use an eight mil pellet on the hook as well. It's ground bait for my method feeder. I've got uh, pellets mixed in with some four mils uh, for the uh, method. Dead reds. I always do quite well with, with maggot on the hook on the waggler here for some reason, don't know why. You can get quite a few, so I've got a few spare wagglers. I've got some eight mils, I like to double up with eight mils here, soft pellets on the hook. There we go, that's the plan. I need to get fishing because now, four minutes in and I've not cast anything out yet. Right, over and out, I shall see you in an hour. Right, we're an hour, an hour in. And uh, I mugged one within the first five or ten minutes, and then they just weren't interested. So I've gone out on bomb and pellet, and uh, six minutes in, oh, it's a nice fish, I know. Oh, I too big for net, couldn't get it in. Yeah. Let's see if we can try him again. There 
You just roll off on top of the net. I just full length, he was full length at the landing net there and I couldn't get an angle on him because of how close in he was. There's a big unit. See if he'll behave this time, if he can get him up. Have you, have you got there? I've only got one, but it ain't a big one. Oh, he is a big lad. Now he's off. He's awesome. Like watching Brazil. They're going mad because I've got a big end on. Should have had him that first time so we can guide him in this time. No, just keep swimming straight towards me. Ooh. Far too close to me now. Always wanting to go. Get his head up. You gotta come this time. Yes, gotcha. Where's a decent young oh, him. Oh, he's a big lump, him. He's gotta be 12 pound plus, maybe more. What, I think so, yeah. That's a beauty. Oh, that, one, that, that hook was never going to come out. Can't even get it out with the... My goodness me. I can't even, uh, I can't even get to the hook. That is well hooked. You can see that's a unit. Wow! Is that big? I can't get him out at landing net. Oh yes, he might be more. He might be 13 or 14. I don't know. Difficult to tell. But that'll do. So there we go, folks. Let's get back out and see if we can get another one. Right, back out there. It took some getting out of that a little guru size 12 hook. It was right in the corner of its mouth that I couldn't get the my fingers or discharger onto the hook. So as you saw, when I managed to just get it out, it's flipped. But it's been such a big fish. <laughs> Not my pellets everywhere. I think, because I can't find my counter. I think my counter was in my pellets and I think it might have gone in either that or it's gone into my keep net so I'll just have to guess I'm going to put £12 down for that biggest fish we've caught this season so far is 13.05 so I've got to weigh that to see if it's beat that one but it certainly felt very heavy um, these fish are still mulling about and like I say first there were two or three coming in first put in it went straight away I thought that'll do but they've just, they've just gone funny. They just don't seem to be um, taking it or, or look interested in a, in mugging. You know, putting a bit of bait, maybe a foot or so just in front of them, hoping they'll follow it down. 
and they just seem to go straight past or turn. So I've had about 45 minutes mugging. I was a little bit late getting fishing, as you know. And there's one in front of me there, but they've been like that. Even the ones just in front of you throw a, a free pellet to them, they just don't seem interested. So what I've done, I've not gone on the short line straight away. I'm getting plenty of liners because obviously there's fish mulling about. I've put some pellets and uh, like a ball of micros at the top two and three, just on the ledge. I'm going to have a go there a little bit later, but I just thought with all these fish, I've been finding sort of 10 to 15 pellets out twice. And I thought I'll go over it and have a look. And uh, it went round. And what a lump that was, and it was worth the wait. I thought I'll leave it a little bit longer because when people, when I've noticed where people are in and out all the time, they seem to be spooking, and I can hear lads sort of saying, as soon as you put a float on, they, they disappear. And so I just thought I'll be a little bit more patient. I'm going to have like six minute casts on the bomb. I'd normally be a little bit quicker than that. I'd normally be sort of maybe two or three minutes, fire some pellets and go straight over them. But I thought, no, I'll just be a little bit more patient. I'm not going to have too much bait going in. Because I've noticed this year, when, when it's like this, when they're mulling about, too much bait does seem to put them off. That's where I am, that's in my experience. Um, so, like I say, be a bit more patient. But I'm, I'm up to 17 pounds. I'm going to have to remember off the top of my head and order a new counter. Unless I find this at the end of the match and it's dropped in my keep net. So there we go, 17 pounds. There's, there's one or two fish being caught, but there's nobody. Everybody's moaning. There were a few foul lookers to start with. Um, but the fish that have been caught have been of decent size. I think Dave Sawyer, he's on like sort of, what is he, peg three or four, peg four, I think. Normally decent pegs there. Tony's on peg one, that's, that's usually a flyer. That'd be a difficult peg to beat. Mick Smith on peg 30 would be difficult to beat. And like I say, black over on my right hand side. But there's fish everywhere. So, I don't think it's a case of panic stations, try and get them in as quick as you can. If you're catching a few fish that big, you only need 10 for over 100 pound. So a little bit more patience, I think. Prime this short line up here. If any muggers come along that I think look interested, I've got a little pellet on there. I can ship in and go straight back out, so. That's the plan. I've got another slapping rig set up. Might have a go at that, we'll see. And I, like I said, the pellet waggler as well is an option for me. Well, there you go, little update. Come on, the 12 pounders. <laughs> well, nothing on the last cast, but this one. Five minutes in, and it's gone round. And as you can see, it's on top of the water, and there's carp following him. Big, and nowhere near as big. Oh, and the hooks come out. Oh, he's a bit lively. I won't get, I'll have to get him out. He's about four or five pounds. Seems a bit lively. There we go. Double eight mil soft pellet. Uh, five or six pound, I reckon. So that takes me up to, if my maths is right, roughly 23, 22, 23. So five minutes, a lovely positive bite, straight round. Nice, nice little update. And we'll just get a couple of those back on again. Right. There are a couple of ways you can hook, hook these, but this is the way I like to do it your pellet and I go in the side of the pellet as you can see there like that and I'll put two of those and I've got a long hair on specifically for that and I can put three or four pieces of corn on as well which I've also got 
So there we go. Double eight mil pellet, soft pellet, and then I'll just fire. And I've not put any more pellets in after these. Not my target. I'll do two lots, 15, maybe even 20 pellets there. About 15 there, I'll do that twice. And then I'll castrate over those. There we go. Signs on waggler, so I've been on, on to bomb, so I went on the pellet waggler with pellet. And uh, no signs. And I mentioned earlier on the bait tray, the maggots, I put a bunch of maggots on. I have had success on pellet waggler with maggots. And uh, I've just hooked into this. Just been in ringer swim, it didn't half kite off, left couldn't stop it. Impossible when it's that far out, I'm fishing at about 25 metres. It's the first, first bite I've had on it. Let's see if we can get it in. I thought I'd not tightened it up from previous. Get out of those weeds. And I just put a longer, longer tail, a bit deeper. So the bait lands quite a bit in front of the pellet wagon. And literally it went under three or four seconds after it landed. Nice bite, float straight under, line tightens up, you know it's on. Where's it going? Come on, come round here. Gotcha. We've got him. We've got him. Another one about six, seven pounds. And it's kiting about, so yeah. Ooh. He's not happy at all. At all, at all. Nicely done, there we go. Nice. I reckon I'll give him seven. So that takes me up to about 30 pounds. Like I say, it's not prolific. I just keep slotting them in. I've heard one or two people say they've got six. Don't know how big they are though. So I just get a bunch of maggots banded. About four maggots, I'd say banded. Four or five maggots. And away we go. Nice little update for you. That's just, the hair's just not right, right? Okay. As you can see, we're about three and a half, nearly four foot now. And it just lands in front and literally in seconds it was gone, so. Get it in. Again, it's gone straight under, but this is a skimmer, I think. That's what can happen. I mean, you've got maggots on, but not bothered, it's fish. Love a few of those at Southfield, wouldn't you? There you go. Nice little skimmer. Let's catch everything. Well, there's two and a quarter hours left. I've not had a bite for. Oh, last time I checked in, in an hour or so, about an hour and a half. And a lot of other people haven't either. I'm just getting. I've just put quite a bit of bait down short here. I've had nothing just tapping pellets in or anything like that, so I've put quite a bit of bait down. I've just flicked a little method feeder down there just to see. See if I can get anything on the method short, which again, I've caught quite a lot of those nice skimmers doing that and carp. It's just not happening, happening ringer. I think ringer's doing pretty much the same, and he's just had a 10 pounder as ringer. He rings it with four, but he always lies. I uh, just started feeding my margin. I've had another go on bomb, nothing. I've even had a, had a go at slapping. Um, nothing, not, not a touch. I had one, one little indication, but I'm not sure whether it was just swimming past it, but nothing. Mugging, 
try and mug in one or two that's come past them, they're just, they're just away. As soon as a pellet or a float goes in, they're away. I think they've seen it all here. But uh, really struggling for bites, and it sounds like a lot of other people are as well. There's the odd fish coming out. Don't know how they're doing up to the right. Got quite a bit of room up to the right where I fished last time. I left quite a bit of room there on purpose because it did fish. Even though I came second, it, it fished pretty hard all around there. So, and there was a lot of fish there this morning. Um, I've heard 20 and 30 pound down to my left. Can you hear that dove? Uh, not dove, pigeon. And I think I've got about 30 pound as well. But just, just can't seem to hook into any fish at all. Just can't seem to get a bite. Just getting liners. So, dismal last hour and a half. It's like, what's going off? Let's hope something turns up in the margin. That's what we're hoping for. I keep feeding the bomb line as well. You've got to keep that topped up because that, if that kicks in, you can end up with quite a few fish there in no time if, if they decide to have a chew, but it's a frustrating day to say the least. It's horrible when they're cruising about like this and they're just not interested. Right, here we go. Rubbish update. <laughs> Couple of hours or so to go. Let's hope we can get some more fish in the net. Well, changed back to the bomb, find some pellets out. And 25 seconds later, it went straight around. I've not had a bite for an hour and a half. Unreal, isn't it? I don't think it's the biggest fish. I said that or, or we're wrong about the massive one. I don't think that was that big. It's massive, it's a 12 or 13 pounder. It's quite a decent scrap up. Come on, you beauty. Hmm, might be a bit bigger than I thought. Oh, you don't want to come up. It just feels solid, that. Is it a brute? It just does not want to come up. I want to get away from there. <laughs> Try and get to under my nets and platform. Yeah. It's just not wanting to come up at all, that. Get away. I don't know, it wants to go back again. Come on, you mighty fish. Show yourself. He likes that corner. I wonder if there's a snag down there, but I just can't seem to get him out of that bloody corner. doing pretty much what he wants. Back again. Oh, it's like he's in muscles, isn't he? I can't get his head up at all. Get all at all. Again, he's coming right into these reeds. I don't know about fish getting tired, are they? I'm getting tired, he just will not come off the bottom. He's just a, he's not massive, he's just a brute. He's been training for Olympics. Oh my God. Oh, 
was, I might be far walked. That's what it might be. Uh, it's a ghosty, and I think, I can't quite see properly yet. Yeah, it's far walked, that's why. Thought it was strange. I can't lift his head up, you see, so I had to try and dive at him. He's, he's foul oaked, but uh, it's a big giant goldfish. Look at that. Right, well, the hook is there. Look at that. He was like hooked at the side. But look at this one, a little belter. Look at that. Giant goldfish. <laughs> What's a beautiful fish. I'm glad he wasn't about as big as the other one. Good grief. He put a mighty battle up, mighty. Well, there we go. The fish at last. 34 pound now. Right, I went back out on the pole, short, lost a little skimmer, and I've been getting pestered to death with little taps and God knows what. And then this time, I actually it pulled the pole end under. <laughs> you couldn't miss that bite. I'm struggling for bites. They've started catching one or two. Uh, Jeff's having, I think he's mostly getting a month bomb, which sounds like he's getting some big fish, he reckons. Been asking what net limit is, so I'm guessing he's doing all right. He's my old mate, Jeff. This is, this is a big fish, I think. A decent enough size anyway, at the look of it. Uh, not that big, I thought it was bigger than that. Looks like a five or six pounder, I think. But in time I've set off, he wasn't happy I hooked him. Just can't quite get his head up. Okay, come in this time. Not quite. That's not a bad size. Yeah, seven pounder, I reckon maybe even eight. Oh, that'll do. I couldn't resist it, I saw one that needed mugging. And, uh, which knocked the, uh, the end out of the uh, pole. Was it? I oh, don't know. No, it didn't half go that. I just dropped it on it and boy oh boy did he go. I don't think it's the biggest. I thought it was foul up when it set off. I didn't half take it. Just baby, baby cabs. Uh, that's an aggressive take that was. Okay, okay, you can't swim in here. 
night. A little gap about two and a half pound, three pound. First one I've had mugging for since this morning. Oh well, 46 pounds. I need a few more bit looks of it, I think. Oh well, I spotted a ghosty. It disappeared and then float went under, so I'm hoping this, this is the ghosty. Ah, so that's the one I was targeting. Oh, let's have a look at it. Oh yes it is. You just see him. <laughs> you just seem to stay on top of water as they're coming in. I'll tell you what, when you hook them on these, bah, the elastic just flies out, it's brilliant. Let's just hope it behaves and comes in. So Jeff's got about nine carp now. Maggot Man's got about eight carp. I've not heard much. I've not heard much from the uh, Kev the Pace man. Another ghost in front of me. So I've been doing this this morning and they've not been interested. I was just about to go and bomb because there was nothing about it. Then I saw that. Shipped out and got him. Just can't seem to keep them coming. I've been tested by bloody wasps and flies and... And pegs one and two have been catching. Bob on 29 and Mick Smith on 30. I think I said they'd take some beating as well. I think it'd be between them four. Oh, he's not a bad size ghosty actually. Bigger than uh, he looked when I spotted him. I mean, these can be great pegs, but I've only ever had one decent day on these pegs. I'm on about red letter days, I'm on about like 30 carp type of thing. I think I've got seven or eight. Yeah, he's not a bad size, him. He's not a bad size. Come on, Mr. Ghost. We'll call him Casper. Oh, get out of there. Yeah, I thought I was going to twist him and get his head up then, but no, we had other ideas. Hole up, put it like that, I glide him. As soon as I lift it up, away he wants to go. Always wanted to go a bit now. I think he's about seven or eight pounds. Come on, Casper, pin yourself to your Uncle Alan. Always oh, really wanted to go. Get out. Under there, with all those trees and snags. Oh, he's really going, he's going, he's going. He's putting a mighty battle up his Casper. Mighty. A scrap. They do fight these ghosties though. They just love it in there, don't they? I think I got him another one straight up. Bow. Damn it. He had his back to me when he was coming in. I've just heard him saying them that come in on top of bar stewards. 
Yeah, come on, Casper, don't go in there again. This snags galore there, mate. Come on, cop, I don't want you in there. Oh, he's right on limit as this. He's just wanting to go in them reeds. <sighs> Come on now, Casper, you've had your battle. Is it going? Oh no, it's going back in now. Managed to snare another one. I just put it on one side with the shadow to the right and just as it got to him while I was looking, and woof it went. I never even actually saw that, it just took it. So it did a lo a lucky mug. A lucky mug. Unbelievable, isn't it? How they're taking it now. I won't say it's going barmy, but this is the third fish I've hooked in 20 minutes and I've had an hour and a half, an hour and 40 without a bite. It's crazy. So I don't know what fish this is because I didn't spot it. Oh, you bugger. I'm getting this down. Got him. You got him that time. Oh. Have you watched Mark Rogers fishing? He'll show you how to land fish and there was an oak like it's a right display, so well done Mark Rogers, you are the mightiest fish lander ever. Well, shipped out again, it's gone again. Again, it's on top of water. Taking some bringing in. Full 14 metres in the lash. So I'm getting quite a way out. Flicking it in front of the pole. and keep that uh, shadow away from them. Oh, going to the left where these snags are. I can't make out whether it's a big or not because there are two or three of them. One of them took it, I think it's a mirror. Foul up though because the scale were on it with another ghosty. <coughs> and I've just hooked into this one and there's 10 minutes to go, I think no less. 
Eight minutes to go. I don't think from what I've seen of Bob and Mick and Dave, Peg one and two, I don't think I can compete with them. I'm fishing for my section on this side with sections of seven. So let's just hope. It's coming right in now. Let's just hope we can do okay in this section. I can hear some splashing to my right. Jeff, Jeff might be in my section, I can't remember without looking. I know Jeff's had a few. It's a nice fish as well. section <laughs> right we'll get him in there and get back out and we'll see you at the weigh in Well folks, we are all weighed in, that's the end of the match, um, what a gorgeous day that was, lovely day, loads of fish milling about everywhere, but every person I spoke to, if they've tried mugging, they've not been interested, um, even though I got one from the off, I was hoping it was just going to be a mugging or shallow day today, pellet waggler, just, just didn't quite happen and here, when they're having it, it's, it can be tiring work, you can end up with a fair few hundred pound. Um, I'd say it's fit, everybody's caught, but I think by Saikau standards it's fished a little bit difficult. There's 21 of us on the lake today. I know when you see these big weights, I don't think it'll be as full as what we've had it today. Um, and they do fish a little bit later as well. Um, when I've seen some of the big weights but thoroughly enjoyed it um, nice little learning curve with the mugging and what have you I noticed today that when they were milling about everywhere I've tried different things today I've tried in the margin never had a touch in margin and Bob's just been telling me what he did and I did virtually the same I never had a touch apart from little taps off roach and maybe skimmers and things um, I would say with about an hour to go, I noticed the movement of the fish changed. And I wish I'd gone out mugging earlier. But because I'd caught one on my top two and three, I stuck it out a little bit longer there and I had another go on the bomb. And I left myself with about 40 minutes to go. 
I wish I'd done it that 20 minutes earlier because I, I really started to catch on the mugging rig. Little red 6mm pellet, dropping it in nice and gentle. They didn't want it smashing in front of them, they just backed off. You would drop it in, it was almost instant. I think I had five or six. I probably put £40 together in the last 40 minutes, which is what can happen with mugging. And I've ended up with £73.28. I mentioned pegs one and two, they have been catching, but I don't think they're as big a fish as what I thought they might have been. We've had 57 off Tony, we've had 62 off Dave on peg one and two. The Maggot Man 62, 90, all, all down that sort of area. Soz, didn't weigh in. He was to me right, Scoey to me right, he's not weighed in. Ringer to me left, he weighed in, he's not, not had very many fish, about 30 pounds, I think. What's he, what's the Ringer had? 33 pounds. So, and Jeff's had um, 48 pounds. Seems to have fished a little bit hard on that bit. The only where I fished and came second on the match last time, I gave him plenty of room because it just seemed, seemed very difficult there last time I was there. There weren't that many fish caught, so I thought I'll leave him a little bit of room. People didn't really want to fish that area, but when I drove past this morning, it was black with fish. Couldn't believe how many fish. I thought, oh my goodness me. But the same thing, they've not been able to catch them shallow there, they've not been interested. If I had to uh, start the match again today, I would have set pellet waggler up, bomb and pellet, mugging rig. That would have been it. I don't think I'd have bothered with my margins, because I just could not get a bite in the margins at all today. Um, I think Ringer had a couple in the margin, but lost them under the bush. So I said he never had a touch in the margin. So it's been a bit of a frustrating day when there's that many fish knocking about. It's like, oh my, why can't we catch all these? <laughs> right, so, so that's my fishing. If I see that happen again, if I notice a change, it's time for mugging. It, I can't explain it. it. They just seemed to change how they were moving about. They slowed down and it went a little bit quieter and the fish, you could see them. And when you dropped it in front of them, you saw them go down for it. It just changed, whereas this morning you dropped something in front of them, they just went went away. So, it's just something learned there. But thoroughly enjoyed it, £73.28, and I've just been pipped for my section by John Whitehead. So, let's get on to the results. Your first section winner is um, the Maggot Man with £62.90. Dare say he wasn't using Maggot today. I know for a fact he ended up catching right at the end on bomb and pellet. Bomb and 8mm pellet, bomb and 11mm pellets here can work. Those red pellets at the cell, they definitely work. Section number two, John Whitehead just pipping me, 75.68. So what a mighty fisherman you are, uh, Maggie Man. Uh, 75.68 for John Whitehead. So what a mighty fisherman you are, John Whitehead. Thanks for just pipping me. By the way, he has caught, in the last hour and a half or so, on Fajuka Whites. But the eight mil big fluffy things he says <laughs> and he says i've had one a bung what last hour on uh, feeding six mils and fishing the eight mil he says they're about eight mil white fajuka i think that's how you pronounce it so well done john so for you guys that are doubting fajukas it's worked for old john today uh your third section Kev the pace managed, just managed to sneak in, 59.28. It's not quite worked for him today, the paste. Right, the top three. In third place on peg 30. I mentioned peg 30 and 29, fancied those two. £83.38. Mick Smith, what a mighty fisherman you are. Well done, son. In second place, consistent, very consistent uh, angler is Bob. Bob Huntington with 87.32 landing a 14 it is now holds the biggest fish for the season 14 pound 30 in the margins on corn feeding corn double corn on the hook there you go a big lump 14.30 that made his weight up game in the second place so what a mighty fisherman you are Bob well done son and in first place on peg 20 he had one on the pellet while it was black over with fish then he didn't have anything at all, he stuck it out on bomb and pellet all day, 8mm pellet, 
and it's just that the tips get going around and he's coming with a nice weight of where are you 95 pounds 32 uh, for Dave Walker so well done Dave Walker you are this week's old oh boys mightiest fisherman well done Dave Walker so bomb and eight mil pellet seems to be um, the main way forward corn in the margins mugging and shallow fishing I'm sure if we had another hour on there with the way I was getting bites at the end I'm sure this last hour or so you would pick a fair few fish up right that's it from me I'm thinking of entering the golden reel uh, qualifier at Barston on Sunday I'll have a look see if there's any tickets I think I might have a little trip down there I'm torn between going there and Stoughton Harold there are some mighty fishermen at Stoughton Harold you've got your ringers uh, Lee Kerry, uh, Death Ship, Gareth Lambert, Nick Pals, some mighty fishermen there. So I'm not sure whether to go there or go for a qualifier. So it'll be one or the other. Um, that'll be me on Sunday. So I'll definitely be going to one of them and see on one of those banks. So there you go, folks. That's it from me. I think I've ended up fifth. Um, steady away could have just done with an extra fish that ghosty I lost that were foul up I just put me in the money for me section right there you go folks great fishery lots of big fish in here to be caught so I hope you've enjoyed today's little video uh, on the insights to sank out fishery so uh, thank you very much Raymond for accommodating us today don't forget folks if you do like our videos it's absolutely free to subscribe and if you click the notification bell you will get all our videos as we upload them and a thumbs up would be very very nice so until Saturday, Sunday take care guys and don't forget fish on <laughs>